Hi, my name is Alejandro Macias. I was uh, born and raised in Brownsville, Texas. Currently based out of Tucson, Arizona, where I teach painting and drawing at the University of Arizona. Uh, so this is a, a painting called Man on Fire that was actually uh, inspired by this Luis Jimenez uh, three-dimensional piece that I originally saw in Tucson, Arizona. When I had first gone to Tucson, I was at the University of Arizona Museum of Art. And I've been very familiar with Lisa Menes, like a, a leading Chicano artist figure in the Chicano art movement. Uh, but when I saw this particular piece, it was like uh, really kind of overwhelming in scale. And, um, and it was this figure on fire. And uh, when you look into his work in particular, that figure was kind of a response to um, uh, Cuauhtémoc, who was the last uh, Aztec emperor, uh, who was like um, uh, tortured by fire by like the Spanish conquest, and also like a response to like monks who were uh, protesting the Vietnam War, so they would like set themselves on fire. Um, but so I appropriated appropriate a lot of that imagery, um, and a lot of my work responds to uh, identity, my Mexican American identity specifically, duality, assimilation, critiquing assimilation. So I'm using that kind of like appropriating the, the image of, of setting one, oneself on fire, but also kind of like uh, critiquing the simulation process, like I've, as if my heritage is burning away. So you see like this kind of serape, textile design, kind of burning away, um, engulfing me in some way. And uh, I also like uh, Rigo Luna, who uh, curated the show, uh, has been a, a champion for Latinx art. Um, and so, uh, but it's a uh, gallery, is a DIY Latinx space. Um, and just for artists of color who have gone through that space. And so I, I really wanted to kind of pay an, um, an homage in some way to Presa House Gallery because it's, it's been a space, a safe space for a lot of artists of color and, and from kind of marginalized areas and, and backgrounds. And so I felt like it, he put me in this position to be in the show. So I felt like I wanted to kind of um, highlight that a little bit. Um, it's incredible. I, 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 it's, I've been in a couple of shows where um, that are really kind of like gigantic group art shows with a lot of artists from like from like eclectic backgrounds but also kind of like common ground in terms of the things that they're talking about and, it, and so I think Rigo did it I think this was two years in the making and he handpicked a lot of artists that uh, are saying important things uh, and typically wouldn't get the, the attention and spotlight and so it, I, I understand that the magnitude and the scale of the show is incredible but I think the, the community that he's been bu building, that matters to me a lot. And so like to see a lot of familiar faces and whose work I've been following for, for many years, to actually see them in person and talk to them has been, that in itself has a lot of value. And so the, the spectacle of the show is amazing, but I think connecting with the artists has, has been life-changing, at least to, to me. Jasmine Zelaya. I'm really in awe of all the work that's here. It's beautiful. Um, it's so nice to discover new artists. And walking in, I realize that it's so much to put together. It's so much work organizing a show. So I'm really just in awe um, of all the beautiful work here and just how much work it took to organize it. These paintings specifically are about uh, my being from Pasadena, Texas. I was born there. Um, my memories are of oil refineries and honky tonks um, and, you know, brown people, really, relatives. My uncle's drinking pours with the giant belt buckles and their boots um, hanging out in the driveway and boats. Uh, I guess it's memory, um, which is really vivid, but I painted Gillies, which is a famous honky-tonk in Pasadena, or was, but uh, very iconic, and so that's a major part of what I think of, and most of my work is about identity, and 
mass. So floral patterns are always abundant in the work. And all the women in my family are named after flowers. So floral patterns um, are always present and they sort of uh, cover the faces so that the emphasis is on the eyes and sort of attention in the eyes of um, teary eyes and um, sort of like joy and rapture sorrow sort of culmination of feelings so that's what it's about it's a must see it's so beautiful there's so many things to discover here literally every wall is covered with something that you must see this is uh four years in the making the show uh 2019 i applied to the open call got the show scheduled to do it in 2021 got rescheduled and so uh, I basically spent four years looking at 250 artists to possibly be a part of the show. This is 40 artists, two stories, 117 art pieces, uh, mostly large scale. Uh, it's been a long journey. It's been five weeks of installation. So it's been a it's been a long, long process. And so I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I mean it's everything that I kind of was hoping this would be. And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, it's all about balance and I think the show's perfectly balanced. And, and I couldn't be happy with it. It was amazing to see all Rigo's hard work and you know that was he curated a beautiful show beautiful show uh, oh I loved it it made me very uh, proud to be at Tejano to see some of those those images and like the wide range of images um, and the wide range of media there's just um, so many emotions in there like nostalgia um, plus, you know, some of the political pieces kind of bring forth some anger and whatnot. It's a must-see. You need to see all the talent that's in Texas, that's in the state. Yeah, same here. It's it's somewhere you've got, you have to see, you have to experience it uh, at least once, maybe two or three times. <laughs>